system and converting metrics within the, within the metric system. So we're going to be switching from things like grams to milligrams to nanograms or liters to milliliters, maybe to microliters or maybe to uh, seconds and nanoseconds and doing things like that. So we're going to learn all about how to convert from one unit to another. So um, what I have up here is my way of solving problems, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this together, and then you'll see how it works in a little bit. I want to do it just once together, and then after we'll actually apply it. So this is my method of problem solving. And um, I know I had difficulty when, I, when it came to a story problem. And some of you may, and some of you may not. But I did not like story problems. I would read one of the first lines, and then by the time I got to the end, I was like, what? What are they asking me for now? And got really confused. So this, way, this method that I've come up with basically guides you from one point to the end where you figure out, what am I looking for? What do I have? What information do I have? And then solving your problem in an organized manner. And it's going to help you not only in this class, but hopefully in other classes when you're doing any type of math solving problems. Okay. So everyone's going to say this with me first. So it goes, circle what you want, write what you got, throw in a bridge, and cross your units opposite. Okay? So everyone say this with me. Ready? Circle what you want, write what you got, throw in a bridge, and cross your units opposite. We're going to talk about this problem solving in just a little bit, so we're going to come back to that in a second. So um, we've got some base units. These are not all the base units. So M meter, what is that a measurement of? What are you measuring if you're measuring in meters? Length. length. Awesome. Very good. So that would be length. What if you're measuring uh, liters? What would you be measuring in liters? Volume. Volume. Very good. Nice. That's volume. How about grams? Mass. 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 Good. So if I, if I said, what's the mass? You wouldn't want to say that you're looking for liters because liters would be volume. So if you're problem solving and they said, what's the mass? You probably want your units in? Mass. Mass, which would be grams. Awesome. Very good. And seconds, we know, is a measurement of time. time. Okay? And so it says these are not all the base units, but these are some of the common ones that we're going to come across. So each base unit can have any of these prefixes. There are other prefixes, but I'm going to tell you that I don't use them. So we're going to do one, two, three, one, two, three on either side. We're going to do the sixes and we're going to do the nines. I don't know the sevens and the eights, okay? So um, those are the ones that are the most common ones that you're, we're going to come across. So it says, as with any other prefix, the prefix means the same thing regardless of the abbreviated base unit that's, that it's attached to. Some of you may have used King Henry died by drinking chunky milk. Some of you may have used kittens have dirty mittens during cold months. Does anybody have a different saying for getting the metric system down? Anybody have a different saying? Okay, so we're going to use this one in class. The reason why I like this one is because I'm going to say by is what I'm going to write on this line. King Henry died by because that's going to be the base, by drinking chunky milk. Okay. What do you think the K stands for? Kilo. Kilo. What do you think the H stands for? I can kind of look here. Hecta. Good. What about the D? Deca. Good. The, this D right here? Deci. 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 The C? Centi. And the M? Milli. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some lines going this way. We're going to do one, two, three going that way. And then I'm going to do not too close. One, two, three going that way. And we're going to fill in our King Henry died by drinking chunky milk. Everybody say it with me. Ready? King, King Henry, Henry died by drinking, drinking chunky milk. milk. One more time. How did he die? By yeah, drinking chunky milk. milk. So start over again. King, King Henry, Henry died by drinking chunky milk. milk. Okay. So we're going to start with K over here. And it's going to be K something. Because you'll have different bases. And we're going to talk about the bases in just a second here. But it can be kilometers. It can be kilograms, it can be kiloliters, it can be kiloseconds, okay? So that's going to be K something, okay? So King, the next one is King Henry, good. So I'm going to have an H with a line there. And a lot of times they'll use lowercase as well. I've seen it as capitals or lowercase. Um, so on here I have it as lowercase ones. The next one I'll do is lowercase two. Uh, the next one is King Henry died. This is a DA line. So it can be, it's called deca. You can have decagrams, decaliters. So that's deca. 
Um, the only one that is a little inappropriate is if you write D-A-M, which are decameters. It's not really inappropriate, but when you write the word. Um, so the next thing is base. So let me just write base going this way. So this is base. And for base, we can have grams as our base. We can have liters as our base. We can have meters as our base. We can have seconds as our base. Okay, so different things. I have glams, G-L-M-S, um, uh, grams, liters, meters, and seconds. Those can all be different base units. Okay, so King Henry died by doing what? Drinking. drinking. So let's do our next D. That's the deci. So that's our drinking. Drinking what? Chunky. Chunky. That's centi. Good. Milk. And milk. Milly. M with a line. There is a difference. I want you to make sure that you know that there's a difference between, say, M and MM. What's M? Meters. What's MM? Millimeters. Millimeters. Awesome. So just making sure that you know the difference between an M and an MM. If you were at base, it would just be an M. But if you have MM, that's millimeters. Okay? We're going to add um, two more on each side. Okay? So I'm going to do is I'm going to put an X because I don't know what 4 is. I don't know what 5 is. I'm going to put a 6. I don't know 7. I don't know 8. I'm going to do a 9. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. So one there, one there, and a line. One there, one there, and a line. Okay. So um, I don't like that I did this a little bit too close on here. Okay. So on um, these two ends, so this is actually 10 to the 0 is base. 10 to the first is going to be deci, 10 to the second is centi, 10 to the third is milli. I'm not going to do negative exponents, you'll see why. If you've learned it with negative exponents, you can continue doing it that way, but only if it works. I had someone last year that did, and they messed up on their entire quiz and came and asked if they could retake it, and you're, you do what works, but what you've practiced. So I'm going to tell you that this way will work every time. 10 to the first, 10 to the second, 10 to the third. Which means that this line must be, I'm skipping 4 and 5, so this must be 10 to the 6, and then this one would be 10 to the 9. Awesome. And the other side is also going to be 10 to the 6 and 10 to the 9. Okay? Anybody know what, and as we go from left to right, I'm going to tell you that it gets smaller. Okay? It gets smaller as we go left to right. The unit gets smaller as you go left to right. So anybody know what's at 10 to the 6 that's smaller than, for example, millimeters? It also starts with an M. Micro. Micro. Awesome. Now what micro looks like, I have it on here. It, the the um, symbol for it looks like this. Okay? It's called mu. Everybody say mu. mu. It's a Greek letter called mu. And the way that you write it, I'll write it really big um, over here on the side just so that you can see. So it kind of looks like an M, and it kind of looks like a U, okay? It's a little bit of a mix of an M and a U. So let me do it over here. And then you're going to have the line that comes after it again for your base unit. Okay, so that's the micro. Anybody know 10 to the 9th is not that hard? Some of you may know this. It kind of sounds like nano. 9. Nano, awesome. And it's an N. It's a lowercase n for nano. So now let's do the two on this side. So I'm going to give you a hint. It also starts with an M. What's 10 to the 6 on this side? Mega. Awesome. This is mega. It's a capital M, mega. And then that's nano. And then I'm going to give you a hint on how to memorize these in a second. Anybody know what 10 to the 9th is? Giga. This is giga. Very good. It's a capital G. Sorry, I forgot my unit line. So then there's a unit, um, sorry, base unit goes right after that. We're not going to do the metric M. Um, I, when I asked people, they said that no one really teaches it anymore, so um, I'm, I'm not going to use it. The unit line works a lot nicer anyway than using the metric M. So um, before we start this, we have these kind of memorized, but we're going to do an activity together to make sure that you get it memorized by exponent. I want to make sure that you have it by the exponent, like 10 to the third, 10 to the second, 10 to the first, because what's going to happen is we're going to end up converting. So if I said that I wanted you to convert from nanometers to kilometers, then what I want you to do real quick, anybody know what the exponent, what the difference is from nano to kilometers? Nine plus three is 12. Very good. And we're going to do these conversions real quick, okay? 
So what I'm going to do is, first I want us to memorize this. I'm going to give you a hit. The micro and the mega, they both start with M, so that's not like too hard to, to remember. Those are the sixes. But um, anyone call their grandma a different name that starts with an N? Nana. Nana. Yeah, I call my grandma Nana. Okay, so it's going to be grandma and Nana are at the ends, but it's really Nano and Giga. Okay, so grandma and Nana are at the ends, or Giga and Nano. And then we've got Mega and Micro. Okay, so here's what we're going to do is we're going to do, I'm going to show you, we're going to use our hands to do this. Okay, and it's going to go like this. King Henry died by, meaning that base is zero, 10 to the zero. Drinking chunky milk, meaning that Milla is 10 to the third, okay? Then we're gonna do our six, our, our micro is at the six, our mega is at the other six, our nano is at the nine, and our giga is at the other nine. So we're gonna do this together, so with your left is what you're starting with. So I'm mirroring you, okay? Here we go. King Henry died by drinking chunky milk. What's this? Micro, mega, nano, giga. Okay, do it again. King Henry died by drinking chunky milk. Micro, mega, nano, giga. Okay, so I want you to see the numbers as you're doing this, and then that way, if I ask you to switch from one unit to another, you don't even have to draw this out. In the beginning, we will. We'll have it drawn out, but I want you to memorize it, okay? So I want this to be something that you end up, um, you end up remembering. Okay, so um, let's go to the next thing, and we're going to try to answer these problems. I came up with something that I call the Biggie Small Rule. And, um, and I'll have people that, even in AP, I had someone that came up to me while they were taking a test, and they said, uh, Ms. Isma, I know this is a silly question, but do I multiply by a thousand or do I divide by a thousand if I'm going from milliliters to liters? And all I said was, do you remember the biggie small rule? Yeah, thank you, thank you. And then they walk away, okay? The biggie small rule is, if your unit is getting bigger, your number should be getting smaller. If your unit's getting smaller, your number should be getting bigger. For example, if this is called what? This is, how, how big is this? A meter, okay? And I want to make sure that you understand what are called equalities to see where the big number goes with the small unit, the small number goes with the big unit. And we're always, we're always going to use positive, so I want to explain this in a second, because saying it in words may be confusing, but once I, once I explain this, it should be really helpful. So this is a meter, and you know, kind of, maybe, what a kilometer is about the same size as, especially those of you that run. What is a kilometer similar to? A mile. More similar to a mile. So definitely a kilometer is bigger than a meter, okay? So my question is, I know that kilo is a thousand. So is it a thousand meters in one kilometer or is it a thousand kilometers in one meter is the question. So think about it for a second. Could you fit a thousand kilometers? You're gonna run a thousand kilometers and you're gonna, you're gonna just run this distance, is that right? No. 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 But would a thousand of these equal one kilometer? Yes. yes. So the correct equality would be written as 1,000 meters equals one kilometer. Let me do something different now, okay? The other thing, and by the way, we're gonna end up using one times 10 to the third meters in one kilometer. That's the way that we're gonna end up doing it, okay? We're gonna use an exponent instead. You could use 1,000, it's the same, okay? So here's another example, because you know time, so the difference between seconds and minutes, what is it? 60. 60. Is it 60 minutes in one small second, or is it 60 seconds in a minute? 60, 60 seconds in a minute. 60 seconds in one minute, okay? So the idea is that the small, sorry, the big number goes with the smaller unit, the smaller number goes with the bigger unit. Again, the bigger number goes with the smaller unit, the smaller number goes with the bigger unit, and typically the smaller number is one. Okay? The other one is going to be a one. You've done a ratio between them. There are going to be a couple of different ways to write these. We're going to write it as a ratio, but set up as a fraction. And the reason why is because we want it in numerator denominator form. So what I'm going to do is there are two correct ways to write this. I can either write it as a thousand meters in one kilometer, or I can write it as one kilometer has a thousand meters. Okay? 
What I cannot do is say a thousand kilometers in one meter. That's wrong. What's wrong with it? It's the same. Oh, it's yeah. bigger. It yeah, looks. it's too big. You can't have a thousand kilometers in one small meter stick. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to write what are called equalities and we're going to write it in numerator denominator form. Denominator form. So, I'm going to show you how that works in just a second here. So all this says is that the big unit and the small exponent, or the big exponent does with the small unit, it works either way. Be sure that if the unit gets bigger, the number should be getting smaller. So here's another thing that I'm going to tell you. As we do these conversions, think to yourself, okay, if I'm going from kilometers to meters, and I'm going to a smaller unit, should your number be getting bigger or smaller? If you're going to a smaller unit, your number should get bigger. bigger. If your number is getting bigger, then would you multiply or divide by the exponent? Well, you know that multiplying does what to numbers, typically? It makes them bigger, it makes them larger. And we're not going to use negative exponents, we're only going to use positive. So you can think to yourself, am I multiplying or am I dividing, just to make sure that you're doing it correctly also. So you have a couple of different ways of checking your work. So we're going to use the bridge method. The thing is, you are required to learn the bridge method. And the reason why is, I'm not doing this to teach you math. Okay, otherwise I cannot incorporate this. We don't have time to incorporate this in this chemistry course, okay? The way that it gets tied in, the metric system gets tied in, is by showing you something that we're going to take advantage of is using what is called the bridge method. And this is something that you'll use throughout chemistry and maybe in other classes as well, okay? So um, we'll talk about the floating decimal. We'll do that as a check. And then it says, again, if your unit gets smaller, never gets bigger, we'll talk about how to shift your decimal later. Let's try this. Everybody say this with me again, and then we're going to try it out, okay? Ready? Circle what you want, write what you got, throw in a bridge, and cross your units opposite. So we're just going to do these two problems now. I'm looking at this problem, and it says convert 35 micrograms to grams using the new bridge method. Then check your answer. We'll check it later. Begin at the prefix count. Don't worry about this, okay? Don't even worry about any of this stuff. This is our problem. So the first question is, circle what you want. What in this problem are you looking for? What do we want that we don't have? Um, grams. grams. Awesome. Circle it. I'm going to actually write it in the margin and circle it in the margin. So I'm looking for grams. Write what you've got. Typically, it's a number that you're starting with. What number are we starting with? 35. 35 micrograms. No naked numbers, okay? Make sure that you write the unit after the number. So please make sure that um, anytime that you have a number, what unit is it? Unless you're counting something. Okay, we're going to throw in a bridge. A bridge looks like this. It's a line going across, and then there's a line kind of in between. So we're making little boxes, almost like a table, like a chart. The book, by the way, does this. They do a multiplication sign and then they do a numerator de de uh, denominator line. It's the same thing. You can use this way if you're more comfortable with it, or you can do it this way. We circled what we wanted, write what you've got, throw in a bridge, and the last step is, everybody say it, cross your units opposite. Not the number, only the units. So I'm gonna write micrograms in the bottom right corner of the next box, bottom right corner of the next box. Okay. So um, I'm going to erase this in just a second, but um, why would you cross your units opposite ever? Why would uh, units being crossed opposite be beneficial? What happens when you cross units opposite? So it's equal? So you can cancel them out. We don't want micrograms. We want to get rid of it, so we want to cancel it out. And I want you to tell me this. So let me just go to a different color here. If I had x times y over x times z times x over y, okay? What can I do? What can I cancel out in here to simplify this? The y's. The y's. Which y's? Those y's right there. That's gone. Yeah. The x over x. Perfect. I can cross off this x with this x, or I could have crossed off this x with this x. It doesn't really matter. So when you're multiplying and dividing, it all works in as one. So then simplified, my answer would be x, z. x, z. Perfect. That would be my final answer. The units work the same way. So a lot of people don't realize that you can actually cancel your units out when you multiply and divide them. When you add and subtract, you cannot. Okay? 
So if you have 25 grams plus 30 grams, how many grams do you have? 25 plus 30 would give you 55 grams, right? You don't cancel out your units. But with your, when you're multiplying and dividing, you multiply and you divide your units, okay? So just keeping that in mind. All right, so now I'm back to here. Let me erase this. We don't need this anymore. So now I'm back over at um, my um, micrograms. And I know I'm trying to get to grams. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our line, our unit line, and we're going to take a look and see where microgram is and where is gram. Base. Okay. How many, what's your exponent between micrograms and base? Six. 10 to the 6. So maybe you need to look at that, or maybe you just remember that micro is at the 6 and mega is at the other 6 and nano and giga. So maybe you just remember it. Okay. So it's 10 to the 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and you're going to write it with the one that's bigger. Okay. I'm sorry, that's smaller. So what I want to do is I want to write my exponent with the one that's smaller because of the biggie small rule. So which one's smaller? As you go toward the right side of the page, they get smaller. So as you go to the right in this imaginary line, they get smaller. So which one's smaller? Micro, Micro or grams? Micro. 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 Awesome. So I'm going to write 1 times 10 to the 6 there. And what number do you think goes with a gram? 1. The reason why is in 1 gram, there's 1 times 10 to the 6 micrograms. So the other one's a 1, not a 0. We're not saying that there are 0 grams in 1 times 10 to the 6 micrograms. We're saying in 1 gram, there are 1 times 10 to the 6 micrograms. Okay? So the other number is going to be a 1. Here comes the hardest part of this all that may seem like the easiest part. We're going to plug it into our calculators. Okay? So I do not want you using the caret symbol. No caret. Okay? If you use the caret, I'm going to tell you you need to get rid of it. What happens is we have four step, five step problems that are going to come up, and the sooner you learn to use your exponent key, the faster you will be. You will not use parentheses. I don't want you to use parentheses. I want you to just keep on going from one step to another. So get rid of the caret. Um, we're not going to use the caret. Here's what I want you to enter in your calculator. You're going to put, you're going to type 35, so in your calculator. Now, on top is multiplying. This is like numerator, okay? And this is a denominator. So if it's in your numerator, you're going to multiply. If it's in your denominator, you're going to divide. We don't have to multiply by 1, right? So instead of multiplying by 1, we're just going to divide by this number right here. Yeah. So here's how I want you to do this. You're going to do 1. You're going to find your exponent key, and it's different in all the calculators. So I'm going to do an E, and I'm going to show you what this looks like in your calculator. 6. And what you should get when you're done with this is equal to... 3.5 times 10 to the negative 5 grams. I'll tell you why it's grams in a second. But in your calculator, you may get 0. 0.000035. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you two things now. I'm going to tell you how to switch into scientific notation if your calculator gives you this. I'm going to tell you how to use your calculator to switch it, by the way. I'm going to tell you how um, we got grams. Let's do that right now. What cancels out in this? Micrograms. Micrograms, one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator, those cancel out, and I'm left with grams. So that's going to be my unit of grams. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few different calculators. Most of you have a TI, okay? On a TI, what you're going to do, whether it's a scientific or it's, um, it's, a, gra it's a graphing one, it doesn't matter which one you have, what you're going to do is you're going to type 35, and then I want you to hit the division sign divided by, you're going to hit the 1, you're going to hit the second key. It's blue or yellow or green, it depends on what version you have. You're going to hit the second key. Right above the number 7 is an EE. I want you to hit the number, the button, right above the 7. It should say x to the negative 1, but above it it says EE. When you hit that number, you should get an E that comes up in your calculator. Then you're going to hit the 6 and then hit equals. And what I got is this.